crazy week of updates in AI video generation, I'm going to fill you in on one that might have fallen through the cracks, Kling Labs. Labs is a new interface for most of the generation features Kling has to offer, and as you can probably tell from the B-roll, it's a node-based interface. But more importantly than that, any of these labs and the workflows within them can be shared with other Kling users. There's going to be a timestamp below so you can jump right to it, but to me, that's the big news here. Being able to share workflows with up to five other people is low-key huge. So what are we going to cover today? Where and how do you access labs? Once you're in, how does the interface work? And lastly, I'll cover some things that I think we would all like to see in the future. Okay, so where is this thing and how do you play with it? Well, you might not have access to it yet. Kling Labs is in beta right now, and like a lot of companies, it's a rollout beta where different groups are getting access in waves. But don't worry, I'm told most people will get access over the course of the next month or so. How are you going to know if you have access? Go to your Kling homepage and look on the left hand side. Under AI generation, you will see Kling Labs with a green beta tag next to it. If you don't see it there, just hang tight. No need to invent time travel. Give it a few weeks and it's going to show up soon enough. Once you see it, you just have to click on it and it'll open Kling Labs in a new tab. And there you go, an interface opens up. Now I'm going to go through some of this pretty quickly. Most people watching a video like this are at least somewhat familiar with node-based interfaces. Most people watching a video like this are also somewhat familiar with Kling. No one is reinventing the wheel here. It's just a combination of those two things you're probably already familiar with. There's a full list of what is and isn't available from Kling in the guide, which I'll link below, and you can check there if you're not seeing something you expected to. But do keep in mind that it's a beta, so there's still some stuff missing. Pretty hard to miss the start screen options as they're in the center of the start screen. You have image, video, and sound generation. Image and sound will default to the text to X format, and video will default to the frames workflow with an image and prompt input for a video generation node. Probably worth noting that anytime you delete everything in a given lab, it'll default back to this view. To be honest, I think you're mostly going to be creating nodes and networks from the drop-down interface at the top of the screen, so let's start up there with a text-to-image workflow. Navigation should be pretty intuitive here, as it's going to work like any other interface you've pretty much ever used. Left-click will select things. Right-click and hold will drag and move around the interface. This might be kind of shocking, but Control-C copies. Control-V pastes. Control D duplicates. There are not a ton of hotkeys here, and you have used all of them before. In the top right, there's what looks like a Windows logo, so I assume if you use any of these hotkeys on a Mac, your computer will just explode. If you click on that, it'll give you a list of the limited hotkeys that are available right now. One thing I would note is that the Windows logo plus minus for zoom in and out is not correct. That's control plus minus for zoom in and out. And additionally, if you hold control and scroll in and out with your mouse wheel, it'll zoom as well. These zoom hotkeys are often shared by browsers. So if you have any conflict, just click inside the interface a few times and it should fix itself. And if you hold left click, you can drag a marquee and select multiple nodes. Okay, so back to the basic text-to-image workflow. You'll notice that it automatically gets populated by a suggestion. When I first loaded one of these, I just hit generate a bunch of times, and now my entire history is littered with a bunch of ancient sword-wielding guys, which I assume was the suggested prompt. Hopefully in the future we have the option to toggle that off. I prefer a blank interface, but it's not a big deal either way. The generation node is going to be super straightforward. It should look a lot like anything you've used in Kling before. It'll tell you which model you're using and allow you to change the model, allow you to change the aspect ratio, select how many images or videos you want to generate. There will be a big button that says generate that you can hit to generate. Have you noticed at this point that none of this is rocket surgery? That's the main reason I'm sort of speed running this portion of the guide. Most people are going to take to the interface fairly intuitively. One thing you might notice is missing is the deep seek helper toggle above the prompt interface. Normally that'll just rewrite your basic prompts into more elaborate ones. Well, that's been replaced with this window at the bottom, which is kind of a limited agentic prompt construction tool helper thing. Basically, if your grandma gets a hold of your account, she can type in this box, I would like a picture of a cat for my grandson. 
and it'll come up with a workflow and a prompt to get grandma a picture of a cat, which I assume is good news for grandma. I'm not sure how much it helps us. This is just my two cents on it, but if you're diving into a node-based workflow, the point is to be very hands-on and to learn how everything works. And the point of agentic workflows is to automate things so you don't have to get your hands dirty as much. That feels like a bit of a conflict to me, but it's down there if you want to check it out. And I'm not trying to pick on your grandma who doesn't understand technology. I get it. She's a U.S. senator. It's a very demanding job. Most people are going to use this for image to video, so let's take a look at that really quick. What do you know? It's an image and a text input. Interesting thing about the video generation node, it's shared between frames and elements features, meaning you can input additional images into the video generation node. Just like any other elements workflow, you can go up to four images. None of this is really all that surprising, but it does imply that the frames and elements workflows have been the same all along. Let's say you want more text, image, or video input nodes. Well, there's a dropdown for that up top. Thankfully, all of these show up blank. If you select any of these newly created nodes, you'll actually see options to create generation nodes that connect to them. These will correspond to the types of inputs generation nodes can take, so there's no image to sound workflow. If you double click in a text input, you can start entering text. If you hover over an image input, you can select something from your history or input something new. Video input seems a little strange right now. I can only select things from my history and not everything from my history is available. This holds true for the My Assets tab on the left hand side of the screen. Some things are there, but only the recent ones I've generated. Sometimes I can see images and sometimes I can't. I'm chalking all this up to it being a beta and things are going to be a little bit buggy. Video to sound is kind of a zoo in general right now. I think it's important to remember that that's a beta and so we're using a beta in a beta and that's a double beta and we're obviously alphas so we're not going to mess with that today. I do want to point out though that one video to sound feature you might be looking for is lip syncing and that is not available in labs at this time. We've done a lot of talking about nodes but we haven't talked at all about noodles. You can drag noodles from one node to another if they're capable of connecting. And if you want to delete a connection, you can select an individual noodle. You will have to click on every noodle you want to delete individually, however. That's most of the interface and navigation stuff, but I will highlight one last thing. You will eventually have a rat's nest of nodes and noodles that makes no logical sense. There's one last dropdown up top that'll have an auto layout button that will reorganize your life and you can be happy again. Look, this is not comfy UI. This isn't even really comfy UI for babies. There just aren't enough nodes here to get to the level of complexity and control that node-based interfaces are both feared and revered for. But there is one last feature that I do think makes this really interesting. If you clicked on the timestamp after the intro to skip forward to this part of the video, don't worry, we didn't talk about you or say anything bad about you at all in the rest of the video, so you don't need to worry about that. At the very top right, next to your current credit balance, you will see a share button. Click that and it'll bring up a window to enter another user's Kling ID number. If you don't know your ID number, go to your profile page and look to the right of your username. There should be a little gray box labeled ID. If you hover over that, it will display your ID, or if you click it, it should copy it to your clipboard. That way you can share it however you'd like. You can add up to five other Kling users to this project, and now they'll have access to the lab and all the workflows within it that you've created. I'm a bit of a freak and I have two Kling accounts, so I can confirm with my laptop that you can have two users working in the same lab at one time. Ultimately, I think that's really cool and I think that's the biggest thing here. There are lots of great generation tools you can access online, but outside of local generation, pretty much everything has us all operating in our own individual silos. We have to resort to sharing SREFs in Discord channels and on Twitter. Up in the very top left, you'll see the word lab with a string of numbers after it. That's the lab you're currently working in. Should have a little arrow next to it. Click on that. This will display all the labs you've created as well as any labs that have been shared with you. You'll also notice there's a new project button so you don't have to get stuck working in a lab for months on end. Fun story, you can enter a lab someone shared with you. 
you can hit Control A to select all the nodes and Control C to copy them. Then you can open a new project. Hit Control V and it will paste the entire workflow. Now you can work on your own version of the workflow someone else shared with you. If you're working on a group project, you don't necessarily need a cloud or a server to share files. You can just share labs, go copy outputs from other people's labs, and then paste them into your own lab. Group members could collectively work on fine-tuning prompts or make effective use of the credits everyone has by dividing up the generation tasks. The point is, while I get that the nodes are kind of limited right now, this shareable workflow thing is pretty rare outside of local generation situations. So if they could further build out the lack of node variety, this could be a thing that really sets Kling apart from other video generators. But now I'm talking about the future, so let's talk about the future. In terms of the short term, they really need to fix Control Z. Undo is sporadic at best in terms of actually doing anything. It's a beta, there's bugs. This next one's more of a personal thing for me, and I've never actually told this to anyone on the internet. I'm a vampire, and I cannot be staring at this bright white screen all the time. I need a dark mode. I need to feel the darkness immediately. Seriously, this is really a non-negotiable thing for me. Dark mode. Dark mode now. Here's a thing you were never going to know unless you heard it from me. In the basic Kling interface, go to your Assets folder. All the way to the right is this thing called Smart Canvas. I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere, but this is all of your labs, both the ones you've created and the ones that have been shared with you. This is also where you can change the name of your labs so they don't have to all be lab string of numbers. What you can't do yet, and what we're gonna need to be able to do, is delete labs here. Otherwise, we're gonna have kind of a lab zoo. I can only imagine how many things are gonna be in here cluttering everything up after six months. One thing I noticed with 1.6 generations is that there's a little toggle on the image noodle to switch between start and in frame. That makes perfect sense as it's a function of 1.6 video generation, but it made me want more toggles. Take, for example, video text input. Normally we have some shorthands for a camera direction that we can just click on and add. What if that was a toggle? What if it was a whole node? Inspiration presets, that might be a cool node to have. What about a deep seek node so you could input text, sharpen it up, and then output that to a generation? That all leads into my last note. More nodes. Make stupid nodes. Make crazy nodes. Make experimental nodes. It's a lab, isn't it? The strength of a node-based workflow is that you have no idea what people are going to come up with. They can invent new and better workflows that I haven't thought of, and they can share them with me, and then I can steal those workflows and pretend to be smart. If you take nothing else from this video, give me more things to steal so that I can pretend to be smart. There are socials in the description, you can click on those. If you have any questions about labs, I'm fortunate in that I have some access to folks from Kling, so if you put your questions in the comments, I can pass them on. If you got value out of this video, share it someplace, that really helps out. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching.